Get ready to drink tea. Great show lined up here. It's sort of a, a mayhem show with um, not a theme like we usually have. It's uh, I accidentally invited 3,000 people, and so <laughs> a whole bunch of people could be turning up. And uh, well, we'll try and make room. We'll try and let as many people in as possible. And uh, we can uh, start the show with the introduction. So, uh, Carlos, go ahead. Um, I'm Carlos. Uh, I study Urasenke style tea ceremony, and I am cheating and drinking Mugi Cha today. Oh, you'll be, oh, okay. Cool. Jen? What brings you here? Where are you from? Does everyone see everyone at the bottom in the same order? I think Is that so. how I ended up second? Yes, that's it. <laughs> oh, um, I'm Jen. I also do math. Carlos brought me here. My cat seems to really like it when we hang out and thinks that this is a great time to jump in my lap, so she'll be joining us. She does not like my tea today, which is peach tea that I brewed in the sun because it's seven gajillion degrees here, and um, it's delicious, but not cat palatable. Yes, there's a heat wave going on all over the place. Even in Canada, in mid-Canada, mid they've got unbelievable heat, too. What, did it get up to 80? <laughs> it's in the 40s. What's your cat called? Her name is Crick. Her brother's name is Watson, after the, the scientist who discovered the structure of DNA. Oh, my. DNA, that would be my segue. Wow. Our next guest, Monica. Well, hi, everyone. Um, I enjoy tea, and this week I actually went to Whole Foods, and I've got a picture of me in front of the tea wall that I can share with you later. But I, I selected an organic white tea um, that is plumberry white tea infused with succulent plum flavor and wild forest berries. And it smells absolutely delicious. And that's the one I'm going to be brewing and drinking tonight. That sounds great. Sounds great. Hey, Kate. Hello. <laughs> well, I uh, am Mei King Sang. My first name is Mei King. I'm a BBC, British-born Chinese, and I moved to Brisbane, Australia two years ago. And I'm drinking as a tribute to my British upbringing and my American upbringing, uh, sorry, my uh, Chinese upbringing. I'm drinking a Dang Hong Oolong and a nod to 80s popular culture, my Garfield mug. Robert, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Under. Oh, um, my name is Robert Godden. I am in Adelaide, Australia. Uh, I'm a uh, uh, tea blogger uh, and uh, have a range of teas that are available in Australia, the US and the UK. Um, and I'm drinking, uh, well, I've got two half litre mugs here. Uh, this, this one's got a uh, Doki Rolling Thunder, an Indian oolong that is just my favourite oolong of all time, which upsets most people. And um, this is uh, our own Lord Pigeon blend. So I'm kind of nursing them both because I thought it might be a fairly long hangout. Your own uh, Lord Peterson blend, right? Yes, yes. Named after a uh, Edwardian lord who had 365 tea canisters, one for every day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness <laughs> gracious. I, I read that on the blog, I remember. Wow. Well, uh, Duchess of Bedford, who was alleged to have invented afternoon tea. And you blend it right there? there? Sorry? You blend it right there at your place? Um, well, this one is blended right here in this very office. Um, we also blend it in Austin, Texas, and in Ber uh, Berkshire in England. That's our three centres. Cool. All right, and Sue Ann. Hi, I'm calling from. I'm here from Victoria, Canada, and today I'm drinking from Silk Road Beautiful Heart. I don't know if you can see this. Oops. Uh, yeah. It's um. 
basically uh, Chinese black tea with lychee, rose, and jasmine. So very light tea. What kind of black tea is it, Siwan? Do you know? I don't know, actually. Okay. Yeah. Suzanne. The lychee and the rose sounds lovely. Oh, it's, it's very light. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, before going for it. Of course, I did have to bring roses to show you again from the garden. Oh, from your garden. Oh, yeah. lovely. Just for you. And Suzanne. Well, I am extremely embarrassed to be with a group of such a connoisseur in tea. I'm not drinking tea as we speak. I am more uh, on a glass of wine. It's dinner time, so I'd like to apologize to all the the, the tea specialists. But I do love tea, uh, especially when you know what for me tea, and it comes from my mother-in-law who is uh, who is from uh, Sweden actually, and my my father-in-law who is from England. You know what? Around four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, you still have a lot to do, uh, but you're tired. Uh, I will never have a kind of those energy, those drinks that have 300 milligram caffeine. I'm going to have a cup of tea and sit down for 20 minutes, and I do love and enjoy tea very much in the afternoon. Yay! Okay. Yay! Yeah, you don't have to <laughs> You don't have to be a connoisseur to uh, to be in the tea for ten hangout. That's for sure. Well, I I think that after this hangout, I'm gonna be a connoisseur because of you guys. There's there's <laughs> <laughs> that's, true, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, all kinds of people drink tea, and I'm also someone who's not a connoisseur and not an expert, but but love tea and grew up with it, and uh, drink it every day, and uh, and I have a have a passion for design, so I I love the Tea pots and tea cups and uh, mm. tea accessories, mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. and uh, and I love doing the page right? and, and making people happy and spreading the, the good word of, of tea and, and tea and health. And yeah. Mm. At, at least, at least I get from it. Yeah. To promote that, more people drink tea, tea and it's better. And Tisha, you you just popped in. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's pronounced Tisha. Tisha, sorry. Tisha. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and I'm sorry, I am embarrassed. I don't have tea. I have water. Okay. It's pure water. <laughs> <laughs> I had my tea earlier today, and I'll have tea tonight. It's dinner time here, and I'm not at home, so um, I'm on vacation. But you love tea. I do love tea. Yeah. The only prerequisite to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Herbal teas are my favorite. And and uh, Ralph popped in also just just now. And uh, were you yes. To it yourself. Yes. Hi. Good e good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Ralph. Uh, I just rejoined uh, this this chat. It's my it's my my first Google Hangout, by the way. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm originally I am a German, but uh, I am out of uh, Germany for almost ten years. So uh, I'm I'm uh, spend time in New York uh, as well as in other places in the world uh, like Indonesia and Spain and. Uh, yeah, so I followed the invitation here to join the tea hangout as I also love to drink tea. I also love to drink a lot of water, both. <laughs> and uh, my favorite is uh, green tea and herbal tea, of course. So I look forward to meet some great people here from around the world and um, yeah, having some, some fun together. Right? Mm, well that's, not, that's so exciting! You're in your first hangout. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's my first first Google Hangout, and I'm really impressed how well this works. Um, <laughs> how it switches back and forth between the people talking. Yeah, and right. It's it's wonderful. I think it's the the best thing about Google Plus is the Hangouts, because it, it adds that third dimension that you don't get in in text uh, social networks. 
And um, you meet such wonderful people from all around the world. And, and Google Plus is so global. And tea is so global. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we go together. I I learned uh, recently it's. Uh, after water, the second most consumed uh, beverage in the world. It is. As a water first, a tea second, mm. and I think coffee is somewhere third or fourth place. Yeah. And, uh, Beer and Coke have to be up there pretty high. Yeah. yeah you know Coke? Well, Coke is uh, number one. I there. don't think about unhealthy stuff. <laughs> On Facebook, you rank number one brand uh, brand page. Yeah. But, uh, but on Google Plus, T for Ten just went zooming by Coke, and I thought to myself, well, yeah, he's more popular than Coke. Carlos. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so um, Carlos. Um, yes. You don't have a, a any anything prepared to, to demonstrate this week, eh? Um, no. Although I do have my portable tea set, so I could go get it if you really want me to. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so I'll I'll ask the people who, who I who I haven't asked yet um, the the standard question. And that is, are you a dunker? And Jen, go ahead. Let us know. Do you dunk? I didn't. I, am I what? You dunk biscuits into tea. No, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about how about, uh, how about you, Ralph? Uh, yeah. Can you can you re repeat the, the question? Do you dunk biscuits into tea? Oh no. No, I drink. Uh, I I enjoy tea pure, without sugar, without anything. All, all my life, I was always drinking tea pure, mm -hmm. without anything, because I want to enjoy the tea, not not the sugar. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm I'm anyway. I, I'm I'm not much a fan of sugar at all. Uh, even when I when I drink, uh, let's say sometimes a cup of espresso or something, uh, I I don't put any sugar in that. Uh, so, uh, and uh, my favorite tea is actually more the uh, the green tea, and I have this this kind of of Japanese green tea, which is very very uh, great in in flavor, and it's very very intense and very, very strong. And uh, I also, of, co of course, I think uh, mm. most of you guys are uh, using the leaves instead of the bags. Yeah. So because uh, that is... <laughs> <laughs> bags are a bit of a dirty word. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, there's only one instant tea in the world I'm using uh, because this is a mix of, of different uh, different uh, teas and botanical ingredients. But if I brew tea, I, I usually brew uh, green tea, and this is these Chinese, Japanese. They have beautiful variations of green teas and uh, jasmine tea. So it's, it's, this is my, my direction. Right. How about you, Robert? You dunk? Um, I believe that the ability to dunk a biscuit into tea uh, and remove the biscuit in such a way that you have no crumbs whatsoever in your tea and you're able to cram the whole damn thing in your mouth is the height of civilization, and I believe it should be a noble <laughs> test for it. Um, yeah. <laughs> in Australia, we have a thing called a Tim Tam Shooter, where you get a tea or coffee, and I recommend something like an Australian Daintree tea, and you get a Tim Tam, which is a chocolate biscuit they're called Penguin in the UK. And you bite alternate corners out of it, turning it into a chocolate biscuit straw. And then you slurp the tea through it. And um, I, I speak as someone who has no milk or sugar in my tea normally. You have to understand that biscuit dunked in tea is a dessert. It's not a cup of tea. No. So you can have it quite separately to having your cup of tea. And dunking is absolutely, there's um, a fantastic scene in the movie that's just come out, The Best Marigold Hotel, where an English guy is trying to explain dunking to his Indian host. 
yeah. and it is the funniest scene in the film. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a massive fan of it, and I and I do sincerely send my condolences to anyone who has never enjoyed a well dunked uh, <laughs> biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you, oh well, uh, well, uh, Robert, uh, I do agree with you. I saw the movie, and I, and that scene is priceless. I just love it. So well, uh, Dunking, if I have tea with my mother-in-law, yeah. I would not dunk, okay, in public. But when I'm alone at home, you bet I dunk. It's a must. <laughs> it's so, but but you don't dunk any type of cookie. You have to choose your cookie. Uh, it is absolutely a treat. Yes, I do dunk. Sorry, Geneviève, but uh, yes, I do. The, I do that gross thing when I'm alone. At, and uh, yes, I do. <laughs> and I love it. Be proud. Dunk in public. <laughs> next time, <laughs> next time I will go public. <laughs> <laughs> next time out, how about that? Hey, what's your about you, Tisha? I am not a dunker anymore. I used to be when I was small, and um, and I feel another page coming on. Do you dunk or not? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lawrence, yeah. we should do it for one of the hangouts. We should uh, show the art of dunking. I'd like to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I will make biscuits for that. Because you can make a nice biscuit to complement the tea being dunked in. That's the ultimate experience. Mm. Or cookies, yeah. as some of you will say. <laughs> I, I like the ginger crisps. The, the round, thin ones. Yeah. That's my favorite to dunk. Mm. Me too. Yeah, that's a very good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dunk in a chai is fantastic. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so I. Uh, yes, Ralph. Ralph, you want to say something? Yeah, I, I see that, that a lot of people are dunking, and I think that I am totally out of culture here. <laughs> 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 but I think it, it, it has it has to do that that uh, um, I am I am not that kind of sweet mouth at, at all. So I'm 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 uh, not at all into cookies or, or something like that. I if if I, I I'm I'm more the the, the salty ta uh, kind of guy when I eat something, as a rather than salty than than, than sweet. Uh, maybe this is also one of the reasons that, that I enjoy whatever I drink, whether it's tea or coffee or something, without any additional sugars or, or something like that. So I think this is one of the reasons. Um, There's certainly too much yeah. uh, sh sugar in people's diets these days. Oh, sugar! Sugar there is the word. No I mean, such as much sugar. <laughs> sugar is is the is the worst thing we can do for our health. It's really it's. Uh, when we are, I think we are, we are talking about the the, uh, the sucrose, you know, the, the processed refined sugars. Uh, that this is the uh, not the not the fructose which we can find in in uh, fruits, which is the, the the better stuff for mm -hmm. our body. <laughs> uh, Robert, do you do you play uh, you play music? You have your own uh, songs, kind of thing. Because you can, you're welcome to play some guitar. Uh, I love, I love music and hangouts. Oh, sorry, who were you addressing that? Were you oh, addressing Robert. Me or? Ah, ah, uh, that, that could happen. Okay, okay. It might not happen right now. But it could happen. Yeah. Giving a heads up. Um, mm, yeah. I I'm, I'm gonna suggest in Ralph, um, and this is to do with my own feelings about the proper way to prepare Japanese tea. Stop wincing, Mickey. You know what's coming. If I, I believe you get oh, a we're going to have hand, a discussion. Japanese tea in the other hand, what you do is you pour the tea. I'm not a fan of Japanese teas. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. No, Robert, could I missed that. Could I Ro Robert, you put it in there. Um, could I just interject and explain to everybody, for, no, to, for anybody who's never met Robert before, mm -hmm. Um, 
take him with little pinches of sugar cubes. <laughs> I'll talk as if he's not there. Lovely, lovely chap, but some of his uh, comments can be a little controversial and that's okay because we do love him in his own special way. So it's just a little disclaimer for the devotee. <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard what Robert said about Japanese tea. I missed it. I, I, I you kind of personally, I'm offended it. if anyone ever takes me seriously. Um, we used to. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, look, I, I had a tea shop, um, and we had when I bought it, we had 14 different Japanese teas on the shelf, and uh, I just didn't like any of them, and I've extensively. Um, well, I basically tried to avoid Japanese tea ever since, but every time I, I managed to get one, I just, it just for some reason, it just doesn't agree with me. Um, I don't like the bitterness, I don't like the grassiness, and I certainly don't think you can make bad tea better by putting burnt rice in it. By putting what in it? It's not supposed to taste bitter, Robert. You're making it wrong. I've had it in Japanese restaurants. Anyway, but let's not get down that path again. I welcome diversity. Okay, Suzanne, when you type, it comes out uh, uh, pretty loud, so uh, watch out. Oh, sorry, excuse that, me. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I wanted to ask uh, everybody if uh, if they buy tea online. Who buys tea online? No. Robert, you sell no. tea online. How's business? I, I, do both. I, I do both. I buy tea online. I sell tea online. Um, and I, I tend to buy weird things, like for example this. Uh, this is something I just bought online, and it's a um, Jaya Chakra, and it's a round Sri Lankan tea. And um, they it's curl those up by hand. Sorry. They curl those up individually by hand. Those rings. Uh, according to their uh, their site, they have a secret process. So I don't know what that means. They have a whole stack of very poorly paid villagers sitting there rolling in my hand or whether they have some machine. <laughs> I suspect I bought 20 different teas from the same place and only because I wanted that one and that was actually the least favour of the 20. This is not very good, but some of their other teas were fantastic. It's so a very good question I you've raised there, actually, uh, Lawrence, because when I first started my tea business, I was in the space of selling tea, but now um, I like to do more tea note speaking and uh, business consulting for tea business startups. And the thing that I realized was that, you know, Robert mentioned that he doesn't like Japanese teas because it tastes bitter. And that was the thing that I was concerned about, that if people are making tea incorrectly, they may be inclined to blame the product as opposed to the person who's made the tea. And an online, a good online website will have clear instructions on how to make tea properly, how to steep it properly, how much to use, and the methods in which you would use it. Because there are some teas that are tea, uh, temperature sensitive, and so if you use the wrong temperature, you're going to get a burnt cup of tea. And you know, with, especially with white teas and green teas, they uh, use uh, 70 degrees Celsius water, which is about 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you use anything more than that, it's almost like having a, burnt, uh, a slice of burnt toast. It doesn't matter how much jam and cream and butter you slap on it, it will still be a burnt slice of toast. So for a good online website, um, it has to have clear instructions. And because tea is such a, you know, it's such an amazing product, it has to be done correctly. So if uh, for online websites, I think that um, for good online websites, I think that they would um, provide a sample to people just so that they can try the tea. And then if they like it, then they can, you know, purchase a, a big pack. And, uh, you know, because tea is Your such... Of somebody who gives uh, samples that you can tell? Yeah, I think so. Or they do smaller, t smaller packs of tea, so you don't have to commit to buying a full, you know, two or three ounces or 50 grams or, or whatever. I think that, that would be an indicator of a good 
um, tea websites. There are some amazing tea websites that when you purchase a tea, they'll actually give you a few samples for you to try it. And that's amazing as well because, you know, there's 3,000 different types of teas out there and that's even before you've added any herbs or flowers to them. So, you know, um, I know I've tried, I've tried hundreds of teas. I haven't quite got to the thousands, the thousands, three thousand yet. So um, that would be a great um, opportunity for tea companies if they sell tea to have little packets as well so that they can introduce um, tea drinkers to new types of tea. I've got off my soapbox. I'll, I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so that same I'm online tea seller's making that it, it, it is. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's really expensive. Oh, it's really expensive to send out samples, but what we do is we do tend to pop in a few samples when we send out an order, so that people might order two or three teas and get another couple to try. Uh, but the idea, because I mean, the postage, uh, and especially in Australia where we, our distances are so vast, the postage is quite often more expensive than the tea. Mm. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult to send out samples. The other thing that we are looking at doing at the moment is we we just sent a package of tea to New York to do some sampling there. So we've made one, one sent to one place and then been invited to come and try it, which is a, uh, a different uh, way of, do, of getting that across without having the massive postage problems. Mm -hmm. Also, you've made a point about um, instructions. I've just started shooting instructional videos where each tea, I actually say, here's how I make this tea and much as I think you should have a go at making it your way, this is this is if you make it this way, you'll get a cup of tea that I like. And I, I think that's uh, I'm hopeful that that's something that's going to interest people. It may be that people don't want to watch a five-minute video on a three-minute process, but I don't know. I just shot one yesterday. Oh, I watch tea making videos all the time. Mm. Does that I help do. you to improve your um, your Japanese tea ceremony, Carlos? When, do you watch Japanese tea ceremony videos? Um, I do, but um, that's mostly for my own entertainment. I don't um, spend a lot of time oh. watching them like sports films or something. Um, one okay. thing I do want to do at some point is start recording myself and doing critics. But, um, I'll get around to that. Uh, mostly I just go and I have my weekly practice and I get my feedback from my teacher and that's more or less how things go. Um, but getting back to uh, Lawrence's question about ordering tea online, I order tea online a lot, and there's actually a very specific reason for that. And that's because most of the tea I make is matcha, and matcha comes powdered, so as soon as you open it, it has a very short shelf life compared to other, compared to whole wheat teas. Um, and since I only take the annual pilgrimage to Japan once a year, um, I can't get enough matcha to last me to the next one, so uh, I do a lot of ordering online, and that works out pretty well for me, honestly. Mm -hmm. What about you, Lawrence? Do you order online? Oops. It's frozen. I think we've no, lost Lawrence. No, Lawrence is muted. I was, I was muted, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to multitask and check on comments. Um, it, yes, uh, the, I like to shop locally, and, um, and there's a, a health food store in the area. And there's a new tea shop that, that opened, the first one in town. That, that oh, opened. yeah! It's, in the 10 years I've been here, it hasn't been one. And anyways, I, I saw it closed, and I didn't go today. But I, I looked in the window closed yesterday, and they have loose teas and... Fancy teapots for sale. I'm so excited to go in there. I will pop soon. Bought at a local place. I'm a business. Just the way I like it. I think have they... I managed to have I managed to convince you to get the tiny glass teapot for sampling tea yet, Lawrence? Um, no. You haven't. Go ahead. You convince oh. me. I think um, online is obviously very convenient and 
you know, over the past couple of years that I've uh, been in Australia, certainly the number of vendors who are going online um, has just shot up. There's just so many TU uh, websites out there, which is great. Um, but there's nothing like having someone to talk to. You know, when you go into a tea room and, you know, uh, I, I know a fabulous place in Melbourne and they actually talk to their customers and they will match a tea to the, the person to how they're feeling at the moment, which is, I just think is just so lovely, you know, that the, the staff of the uh, tea place can actually um, listen to the customer, listen to, you know, and they'll know their customers and how they're currently feeling and actually try and match a tea to that. You can't get that online, you know, so there's nothing, I, I mean, I love, you know, I, um, I would buy online as well, um, but there is nothing like going into a tea room and having that special connection with, you know, sniffing the jars and, you know, looking at the tea and talking to the owner, you know, that, you know, you can't really, yeah, there's, there's nothing that matches that really. Um, now, I'm not saying that I'm a Luddite because I do love technology as well, but, um, but yeah, an online tea store has to do something really, really well to compensate for the fact that you can't go into the store and sniff the jars and, and ask the owner about the different teas and so on. You know, the other, the other thing I like about the tea shops is that um, some of them provide samples. There's one in Victoria that as soon as you go in, you get the tiny little cup, You've got the first tea, the lightest one, and then as you go through the store, you'll get at least you get to sample at least three different teas. Yeah, and it's very rare you don't buy one of them, you know, because they're so good. You get and it's something that I wouldn't even try usually, but they get a chance to give it to you, and you know you get to try it. But I was wondering, Lawrence, there's the other idea. Uh, maybe um, this can also become a sort of a photo walk if people can use their smartphones and take people like in uh, Melbourne into a tea shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now Street View is starting to go into um, uh, museums. And so ah. if we wait long enough, they'll go into tea shops. Then I think, for example, in <laughs> the Hangouts, what I've seen, you know, it takes, the, it takes people to experience something during the Hangout. Yeah, by yeah phone. no, I, yeah. I'm... I'm hoping that we have, we, we have somebody uh, live in a, in a, a tea yeah. plantation, a tea shop, you know, all that stuff, that on-location stuff is great in Hangouts. You know, I think it's time for the, the screenshot before we lose anybody else, people dropping out. What, what I usually do is... Uh, um, oh, yeah. Let's get a screenshot of everybody holding up their cup. Uh oh. <laughs> Here's my cup of water. <laughs> okay, so you won't be the, like, the main picture. I did a cup of water last time, so you're okay. <laughs> give, me, give me half a second. <laughs> oh, where's your wine glass, Suzanne? Where's your glass? Oh, man. <laughs> and that'll, that'll allow a chance for Robert to get back in, and, and Monica, too. Oh, so well, Anne has I'm a pretty cup. Uh, I vote she's the, uh, oh, the, the main picture. Oh, that tea cup is pretty. Yeah. Excuse me, here is my nice cup. Mm. Cheers, everybody. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Cheers. Oh, it looks like Robert's oh, joined yeah, Robert. us, so let's have... Let's oh, wait. Robert's back. Robert's yes. back. You should definitely Robert. blue box Sue Ann for this shot. Yeah. Oh, I, no. think, <laughs> I think so. I think so. There's a pretty tea cup. It is. <laughs> right. Robert's got his cup up. We are ready for the screenshot. And we're going to get ready to say cheese. 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 <laughs> Good one. Not on the first. Okay. First try. Sorry, were, you getting your, were you getting your guitar ready, Robert? Yeah. Well, funnily enough, no. But I... Uh, no, my office was a place where I write Japanese tea producers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a, um, I just had a, a freeze. The, um, I did have something like 113 windows open, so possibly that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
I yeah, tend yeah. to multitask and I've got three screens and I tend to just build up over the course of three or four weeks all these windows, all things I mean to get back and do, and then eventually the whole thing just plays under the weight of uh, too much stuff open. But yes, but I have, I mean, yeah, I've got a guitar here. We might get to that at some point. Your picture looks better. There's less lag. <laughs> good, good one, Robert. Right. So what did I miss? We were just finishing off um, the um, conversation about online and tea stores and just saying that there's, there's nothing like going into a tea store really to have the yeah. full tea experience. I agree. I, yeah. I also had the comment I, mean, I think people are online customers across the board. I think if, you, if you're inclined to buy stuff online then tea is just one more thing to buy. Um, whereas you know, I buy a lot of stuff online and so tea, it, it makes sense to me. I think uh, you, people are either comfortable with online shopping or they're not. And, and to me, tea is not, as long as it's properly packed and sent, I don't think it's any different to buying anything else online. Well, there, I, I make some exceptions. I'm really not comfortable with buying books online for whatever reason. Um, I, buy, oh, I buy a lot of things online. Tea I buy online mostly out of necessity. There's not a lot of stores that offer selections of matcha in Kansas. <laughs> but in terms of like movies and these sorts of things, I'm totally close. Actually, I do buy clothes online. Not as often as I buy them in person, but I do a lot Amazon? of online shopping. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. How about Amazon? Amazon sells tea, I am sure. There yes, any? Amazon okay. sells tea. It does not have a great selection, though. No, see, I would be uncomfortable buying tea from Amazon because I don't think they're... Yeah. I don't know. That to me, that doesn't work in my head. I, I, I t anyone I buy tea from, I'm buying generally from producers, as opposed to anyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, producers in other countries, and um, sometimes it's a precursor to talking to them about supplying us. So I'll buy a se selection of their teas with a view that you know, if I like this, I might come back and say, "Thanks for the 50 grand. I'd like 20 kilos." As opposed to just talking to them up front, because I think if you try it as a customer first, you, you know. You, you you get the quality when they're not you know out and out trying to impress you. You just get their their, their normal quality. Yeah. Well, Amazon's just getting bigger and bigger, and, and they're slowly becoming the seller of all things. And you wonder, you know, whether they're really going to have an effect on the tea market because, like you said, tea people want to get their their tea from a, a specialty mm. online tea tea site, not a, a general. Store like Amazon. Making now's your chance to make a special tea pun. <laughs> what special tea? <laughs> I, oh, I was reading a blog the night. I suspected making and written, and uh, when I got to the end of it, that I realised so it was on a blog shop and right. But when I got to the end of it, I realised there were no tea puns in it, so it must be someone else's work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah making always puts in tea puns. I love them. All the for me. <laughs> You were talking about books. Um, Very well. Uh, yeah, I just just uh, was was wondering. Um, I mean, I am I am not uh, using at all, let's say, a tea from, from from tea bags. But I heard recently terrible stories about these uh, mass sellers like Lipton, for example, and. Uh, uh, it's actually more about the the supply chain those manufacturers using um, that the quality is really uh, yeah crap. I heard that that's really that the people prefer to 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 pay less, but they really don't know what's really in that what they're putting into it, considering as as tea. Uh, is this true? I mean, uh, apparently you you guys are more experts in tea than I will ever be. <laughs> I'm just a, a con consumer, or in, I enjoy drinking tea. So I'm I'm. Uh, but uh, how is it generally, man? You if you are selling selling tea in, in, in uh, as a professional tea seller, is it really true like that? These these brands like Lipton are actually not really advisable in terms of quality. Is it is it true? Also, have you heard anything about that? 
that the supply chains that they are using are really questionable? Well, there's two there's two topics. So first of all, I, I put out a post, uh, I guess, about a month ago when when I think it was uh, Tetley that got into a bit of hot water about uh, pesticides, right? And and, um, and they got investigated, and apparently they were staying within regulations. But you know, it was a bit of a PR black eye. And uh, yeah, the, the, then there's the question of uh, fair labor practices down the the, uh, the chain. And uh, I, I think uh, Robert or May King would be good to answer that. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to really talk about a particular tea company in general, but if you, uh, the tea that you get in tea bags is actually the lowest quality grade of tea, yeah. and that's all you need to say. So um, the two the two grades that are used typically in tea bags are known as dust, and they're known as fannings. Now, it's yeah. not called dust because they are sweepings off the floor. That may have happened many years ago, but it's no longer the case anymore because it's closely monitored. I'm, I'm, um, I will defend them on that front. But the reason why the tea bags are using the, um, the lowest quality leaf is because we want convenience. So just like in, uh, instant coffee, we want convenience. We want to be able to pour hot water in it and generate a drink. It doesn't matter if it tastes okay at all, it's just a convenience for generating a quick brew. Tea bags are exactly the same. We want to generate colour as quickly as possible so that we can then mask the taste of it by putting milk and sugar in it. So that's not exclusive to any tea bag company, it's any tea bag company. Yeah. The, the quality of the tea in the tea bags is just the lowest quality. That's, that's just a fact. That's still better now, than not Speaking to convenience, it takes me roughly half an hour to brew a cup of tea when I'm serious about it, but I'm totally okay yeah. with pod coffee. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's still, be still better to, to drink it in, in tea bags with tea bags than to not drink it, right? Well, if you think about it, sorry, I'll, I'll keep, I'll shut up. Robert? Go on, Robert. <laughs> Well, a few things. Basically. Firstly, I last had a cup of instant coffee in 1981 after I went to a year 11 chemistry lecture and found out how they made it. Um, and, uh, and, and I apply the principles across my whole life. I don't believe there should be any such product as tea bags or instant coffee or gravy powder or custard powder, all these stupid things we've invented to save us four seconds and come up with an inferior product. And, and I think what we, Lipton's was mentioned earlier, and, and my take on Lipton's is quite interesting. Tommy Lipton was a bit of a scoundrel. Before he was Sir Thomas Lipton, he was a bit of a, a scoundrel, and he went off to America and did some stuff and did some stuff. But at the end of the day, he opened up Salon as, as a tea uh, place. He did some amazing things. Like he would take guests to show them his tea plantations, and he would stand at the edge of the sort of two hectares that he owned. And you'd see all the mountains behind covered with tea plantations. He would pretend they were his. They did some fairly amazing things, but he was a bit of a he was a bit of a rebel. And um, and, and it then evolved into this company that had this sort of very establishment feeling to it. So, like most of these British um, sort of upper class types, they start as someone stabbing someone illegitimately in a field somewhere, and then all of a sudden they're establishment. And um, and Lipton grew to a point where they became, you know, a, a merchant of fine tea, probably in about the mid-1900s. And um, from there, they basically got so big that they commodified. And now they're owned by Unilever, a name that should be uh, well known to American consumers. And um, they really have just become a commodity. And the tea that they pack in their tea bags is machine harvested, which is one uh, reason that you'll get poor quality. Um, so picked by machines, chopped up by machines. The idea is, and making is absolutely spot on this, you want to put it in your, in your boiling water and in 30 seconds it's got the colour of tea so that your excuse for drinking milk and sugar uh, is complete. You pour those things in and you drink it. And um, it really is a shame. When we have our market stall, people say to us, oh, I don't drink tea. And we end up selling those people tea to drink. We say, we appreciate that you've only ever tried the stuff from the supermarket. Try this. I promise you won't regret it. 
and uh, we regularly uh, actually get people on the spot to go from, oh, I haven't drunk tea my whole life, I hate it, to, oh, I love that, I'll buy a bag. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's, a wonder, it's why we do markets. There's no money in going and standing around a freezing cold hall for four hours, but it's the joy of conversion and the evangelism. Now, not all tea bags are created equal. And so, there are, you know, you may have seen a lot of tea bags that have, actually have a better quality leaf in it. And they are pyramid shaped. And you can see the quality of the leaf, which means, you know, you could potentially use a tea bag more than once. However, going back to um, Ralph's concern, because the tea bags are pretty, you're paying for the packaging. Mm -hmm. The pyramid so, is so that it can yeah. expand, so the, the leaves have more room to expand, right? That's the principle of the pyramid bag? Exactly, yeah. So we need more room for the leaves to expand and extract their full flavor, so they are advantageous in that respect. However, you are paying for the packaging because someone has to pay for the actual pyramid itself, whereas loose leaf tea has free, you know, free reign to roam you're not paying for anything on, t on top of that. Um, and there are some, um, you know, Robert, I, I feel like I'm a tag team between myself and Robert, but he is very against um, the pyramid bags, which they call silk pouches. He yeah. hasn't seen a silk worm in its life. No, they're made and from plastic, corn-derived plastic. plastic. So some pyramid tea bags are very, um, uh, are very damaging to the environment because they take hundreds of years to break down. So, you know, that, that's a bit of a concern as well. Not all, not all pyramid tea bags, but some pyramid tea bags, those which are used um, are made with a nylon gauze or, um, did you say cornstarch, Robert? Yeah, they use cornstarch and they process it the same way they process uh, plastic, uh, petroleum, and you end up with bioplastic. Lovely name. Sometimes they use a, uh, a Russian shrub too, a, a thing called a myota, something like that, which is a, like a conifer, coniferous shrub. And you can make plastic from corn, from beets. The, the sugar gets fermented and then they, and they process it into pellets and then they weave it, make it into car dashboards. And, uh, yes, it, it does, it does biodegrade a lot faster than petroleum-based uh, plastic and it's not from oil. So it's better, but it does, it does still take a while to the compost. So do you want it in your tea? If I said to you, let me improve your tea by adding a small piece of plastic manufactured from cornstarch, are you going to go, yes, yummy? <laughs> no. It doesn't sound very appetizing. Uh. All right, well, so uh, we'll just wrap it up then, and, uh, and we'll... We'll uh, get back together next week and talk more tea and whatever else. And was well, cool. yeah. well, you thank you very much. And honestly, guys, you have given me the taste to go and buy and find, find some fine tea. Mm -hmm. And I know where to go to so, um, Merchies, maybe, <laughs> or a place like that. So thank uh, you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. hope that, uh, that a lot of people Great. who watched uh, will be inspired to uh, to get more into tea. That's Absolutely. the whole idea here. Mm -hmm. yeah. so thank you all for coming. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Right. Bye. I'll see you all next thank time. Thank you. Bye bye. We'll see bye. you. Okay, bye. Uh, that is playing something. Mm -hmm.